um, I am my screen, which is the presentation for this evening. Now, um, I don't know about you, but I'm really enjoying this entire series about core values, mission, and vision. When uh, Pastor Alex called together this, I thought it's really good for us to be completely anchored together in one common alignment. And I think that it's it's great, especially TNCC, our DNA is centered around Jesus. It's only one thing we want to glorify, not, not uh, our efforts, not our, our activities. Yes, we have a lot of activities. You see announcements took a few minutes. So many good things are happening in TNCC, whether is it a, you know, Deacon Chiram coming, whether is it our Easter play, whether is it Encounter Night and the, the various, uh, you know, uh, mission trips that are coming. Yes, they're great. We appreciate it. However, there's only one thing we want to glorify, and that is Jesus. So whatever that we have, our core values, our mission, our vision is all centered around Jesus. And like what Sher Sherry said just now, that our final uh, installment for the series that we have is about vision. Now, this um, just to bring you to some uh, remembrance about our path. So we covered chips, you know, we, you know, it's something that we talk about very often in TNCC. It's like our DNA. And then last week, uh, Pastor Alex shared about a mission and the, the journey that we have come through, you know, about how we are so um, liberated in God's grace. You know, no, no longer being shackled down, you know, but, you know, the fact that we can freely serve God with a heart of sincerity and knowing that, you know, he doesn't hold our sins against us, but he wants us to be excellent. And I believe that uh, as we talk about uh, the mission, where we are at, all right, basically, it's our unique reason for our existence, where we're at. And tonight, we're going to do something different. It's basically what you see in the middle portion of the core values, mission, and vision. And we call that the vision. Or I would, uh, it's, it's, it's called the desired long-term change in our community and an impact to the world. So that is something that we are going to talk about today. And it really is about where we want to go. So mission, where we're at. Vision, where we want to go. And I'm really, really glad, you know, and um, I had a chat with Ken, we just say he's online right now. And we just chat about how important it is for us to eat, encapsulate this so that every person is within our DNA, that we can just recite it, we can just mouth it, mouth it off and say, what are you about? Obviously, the easiest thing, if you've got elevator speech, you see a boss and he's saying, hey, you know, what is, what, how, how are things? Obviously, you can just say Jesus. Then you can talk about, oh, you know, all about chips and our mission and our vision, right? So we're completing today and talking about where we want to go, okay? Our vision, right? <clears throat> and it's so important because in Proverbs 29, verse 18, it says, where there is no vision, people perish. And we see the second part of it, you know, part B, he that keepeth the law is happy is he. And we know that because it's written in the Old Testament, the, song, uh, the Proverbs. So we also understand that now when we say law, we really mean his word. And it's so important that we understand we're, we're uh, deeply uh, um, rooted in knowing God's word. Because in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So knowing God's word also means that we also know Jesus. And Jesus, as I'm going to uh, uh, share with you throughout this to uh, topic about vision, is full of vision. Because he wanted people to have a strong purpose. He wanted people to carry out his mission on earth. He wanted people to share the vision at the end, how much that the vision which was that everybody will come into the saving knowledge of a loving savior. So I thought that that was really important that TNCC is really, really very focused. We know where we're going. So repeat after me. I know where I'm going. Say it now, okay? I know where I'm going. It's important, right? You know, like we start, we, we, we know you look at books, you know, we talked about, um, you know, uh, Pride and Prejudice, the previous message I talked about, Prejudice, right? So by Jane Austen. So another literature that we know, Alice in Wonderland. And, and I said this before, you know, the cat appeared before Alice and say, uh, where do you want to go? And uh, the uh, Alice replied, uh, I don't know. And then the funny answer from the cat was that, then it doesn't matter. I mean, that means you don't even need to go anywhere. And if you're not going anywhere, then I believe 
you need, God created us to be a vessel, that there is life, life that comes in and life that goes out. And as such tonight, I hope you capture the spirit of the vision of TNCC, how we're so passionate. You know, we talk about the, um, the, uh, uh, the, the, the mission and then today we talk about vision. I think it's so important that passion is, is in there as well. You know, the previous one, mission is supernatural, which Susan talked about, you know, uh, uh, even in her preaching on Sunday last week living out the supernatural even naturally in your daily life. So that's the mission. And today with the vision, we want to talk about how we're able to, 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 to live out our vision in a passionate way. So moving right ahead. Oops, my screen is jammed. Sorry about that. So I, as I mentioned, uh, focus on the future is the vision statement, what we want to become, right? So uh, let us all read this, this out together. I think it's important and especially pay the focus and attention to the yellow words. Let's start. One, two, three. A community transformed by his grace and impacting nations with his passion. Now, if you think about these words that have been just, that you have just mouthed out, it can be a, a, a big, it's a, like, you know, looking at something so big, wow, impacting nations, transformed by his grace. Tonight, I just want to, you know, help us by breaking it down. So everybody say, break it down, all right? If something is so big, we like to break it down. And we start with the with word by word, okay? That is so important for us to understand and encapsulate the essence of why the, the pastoral team felt that the vision for TNCC has, is as such, all right? First thing, community, right? So I like this verse. Uh, it is taken from um, Psalm 68. And um, it says, to the fatherless, he, fatherless, he's a father. Oops, I cannot see my screen. Minimize a bit. To the widow, he is a champion friend. The lonely, he makes part of a family. And I like to look at the different translations. And the Alkitab Versi Borneo talks about the family to be lingkungan. And, and I, I got to admit, you know, I'm also learning Bahasa even till now. And I didn't know this word until like a couple of weeks ago when I was preparing for this. And lingkungan means environment, a family environment. So in other words, community, the first word in our vision it's about having this family environment and that no one in any way is missing out. And I like it. For example, I'm just tracking through the participants. I see the entire Soon family, okay? Father, mother, sons, <laughs> all the family are all watching in different places. So they're all involved in this. And, 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 I, and I love that TNCC is all about family, right? So therefore, everybody has an important part to play. Like we always say in Corinthians, Every joint supplies. So there's sometimes in our family, in our community, where we receive and sometimes we give. But some people, like you say in this verse, fatherless, they need a father. To the widow, they need a champion friend. And, and of course, I, I find that um, people in our, there are people in our community who are, who are widows. And my heart goes out to them because I also lost my father a few years ago. And I just think that it's so good that we, we can find even fathers who are not uh, um, related to us, fathers in our community. We can find people who are widows that we can give to. So friends, let us not be a, a, a stranger. We are not an island. We're not alone. Let us receive and give at the same time because we are a community. And as you can see, all the activities that we're planning in the next few months to come, wow, it may be packed. But hey, you know, let's make memories. Let's do things together that we can impact nations with the love of Jesus. We continue on with this verse in Psalm 68. And it says that the prisoners he leads into pros and to prosperity until they sing for joy. This is our holy God in his holy place. But for the rebels, there is heartache and despair. Now, what happens is that the earlier verse is, is really about people who may be missing out and people who, who even come to TNCC 
and they may have issues. They may be in prison. They may be struggling with sin. They may be in bondage. But hey, together as a family, lingungan keluarga, we are together helping each other by pointing everyone to Jesus so that anybody who is a prisoner is going to be set free. Okay? But the second part that says for the rebels, there is heartache. People who don't really want to follow, don't want to be, be part of the program, don't want to, to, to share the vision, it's really hard because maybe it, it's, it's really struggling through life alone, you know, like being, being, being like an island, being isolated, which is never God's heart because God makes the lonely, he makes part of a family. You see that he's placed us as part of a family. So he never wants anybody to be alone. So if you can think about people around you right now, TNCC, there may be some people who may be in, in, in bondage, who may be struggling with it financially. It could be a situation where they're struggling their studies, in their families. Then you have the opportunity to lead them into prosperity and then let, allow them to sing for joy. Amen? Now, this is a really interesting story. So we go to the second word of our vision statement. And you, you remember what is this colored in yellow. Please inform me right now in the chat, okay? What is the next word in yellow? And the word is transformed, all right? And you see a picture there. I don't know if you are familiar with this story. It comes from Luke chapter 5, verse 8 to 12. And it starts with Jesus. Jesus was actually... Teaching his uh, teaching to a, an entire multitude of crowd, and the interesting thing that I never really noticed early on before was that actually Jesus saw that there were empty books. It's important, right? I said just now earlier on that Jesus has vision, and he sees okay, there are a bunch of fishermen here. They're already cleaning their nets, means that they're done for the day, but the boats were empty. And you know what? He has vision. Jesus has vision. I hope that you capture that and you see that the same thing can happen in your life as well. So what did Jesus do? He borrowed the boat. All right? And you think about it. Wow, you know, that's their livelihood. And now they're they are, they are missing out in their livelihood. They're literally just trusting it and trusting their main vehicles like me. Sometimes, you know, the other day, someone borrowed my power tool. You know, I think Pastor Susan preached it during uh, uh, during her supernatural uh, sermon, right? That I'm a handyman, yes. So my livelihood is my power tool. When I lend it to people, I tell people, please, please return it to me because I use it a lot, okay? I use it a lot because I, I do a lot of fixes, right? So it's imagine... It's like a fisherman without his boat, right? How's he going to catch any fish? But somehow, Peter lent him his boat and he took it out and all the fishermen allowed him to use the boat and he preached a message. And then after preaching the message, he called out to Peter, right? And then he says, okay, I want you now to set out and to catch some fish. And then Peter said, but, but Lord, you know, we tried to fish all day, but we caught nothing. You're familiar with this story, right? And in fact, there are two instances. This is one that we shared earlier in Luke chapter 5. But there's another instance at the end where Jesus restored Peter. And the same situation happened. So Peter was reminded in the later second story of a net breaking, boat sinking, uh, full of fish, right? So this is the first instance that happened. So Peter said, but at your word, and I like this. Word is so important in TNCC because it is Jesus. And every single week, we focus on the word, just like what you are doing tonight. So Peter said, at your word, I will let down the net. And he did that. And it came out so much fish. Jesus had, uh, Peter had, sorry, Peter had to call his friends to come and pull out the net. And then G Peter then realized who is Jesus now. All right. When Peter, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, "Depart from from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord." And then we continue on. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with um, with Simon. So it, you can imagine, right? They 
they sought out to lend to pass to to was so into Jesus' ministry, all right, by lending him the boat. And when they did it, they did it by faith. And they were astonished at what Jesus did to give back to them. And though you know what I was talking about, the word transformation. And it's something I really want to share. I'm going to share a testimony about what, what has happened to me. And I'm such a grateful beneficiary of God, what God has been doing in my life through TNCC with the vision that we have. But as Peter did that, as Peter did this, as he gave up, you know, as he sowed into Jesus, Jesus, God is never a debtor to anyone. And he always oversupplies. And I hope that you say amen to this. Okay, so whenever you sow into someone's life, know that God will never owe you. He'll always, and I'm a, I'm a great testament of God's goodness in my life when I was so undeserving. God has given me a, a great boat full of fish okay <laughs> amazing catch all right and um so i continue on jesus said to simon do not be afraid from now on you will catch men in other translations fisher of men so he became from a fisherman to a fisher of men and so much so they were so transformed that, uh, that when they brought their boats to land they forsook all and followed him I love this story. I mean, it's like they, they, they suddenly realize their priorities. And I, and I like it because the thing is that in TNCC, I have been, like I said, I've been a, 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 a very um, a grateful beneficiary. And I want to ask this question to you. I myself have been that. I myself have received. So my question to you is that I want you to be involved in this next section, Okay. I want you to help type out how has TNCC helped transform your life, okay? Put it in the chat and later as I finish sharing, I just want Sherry to help me just to read out the things, you know, the other day we did it, right? You know, who, you know, honoring part, you know, who we like to honor. And today I just want to have some interaction from you. Take this moment to glorify God and encourage other people, okay? And as for me, I, I think I've shared many, many years ago, uh, God has did done a, an amazing thing in me because um, I never really wanted to marry a missionary. I think I told you that, right? But somehow TNCC with the vision of have to, to reach out to, to the mission field and the various things that we're doing, you know, for the community, ended up inviting a missionary to church. And as you can tell the whole long story short, I ended up, you know, um, dating this missionary and now I'm married to her. But the thing is that the transformation did not take place immediately. The transformation happened years ago. Years ago, that when I first made my decision at the age of 21 to go for a mission trip. Now, this is something that my wife has also shared in a similar experience, how she became, uh, uh, how she flowed into this area of God's heart, the missions. When she was a young person, she went to uh, um, Guatemala, I think one of the poorest countries in South America. And she was so touched because for the longest time, she felt she came from the poorest family in the whole kampong, in the whole village. However, when she came back from the mission trip, she realized how rich she actually was. And so rich, we cannot contain it. That was my experience. When I was 21, I went to Cambodia as well. And, and it was such an amazing experience because I came back and it just rearranged my priorities in life. I started to realize, hey, you know what? There's so much more than, than climbing the corporate ladder, than, than being materially provided for. I want to be a conduit, a channel of his blessing. So fast forward. 20, maybe 20 plus years ago. I have a video to show you, okay? We brought TNCC. We brought TNCC, a bunch of us, and I saw Clayton online. He's going to be shocked to see this video. Clayton and Tracy joined us together with several other people, like Zewen and all. We went to the same village I went when I was 21 years old, okay? 
And obviously, when at the time, you know, everything was laterated soil, all orange in color, there were no trees. Now we and, and the people that the pastor that I the pastors that I saw 20 when I was 21, completely all are still there. Same pastors, I still remember their names. How uh, some of them were so skinny and so young. Now I look at them, the same pastors. I'm in their house now doing ministry 20 odd years from there. Okay, so I just like you to watch this video. It's a short one, and you cannot hear the audio. It's okay. We're just singing "How Great Is Our God," and we sing it in various different languages. Okay, so just watch. <clears throat> Can you hear me? All right. So this is another picture of what we did, you know, together with the TNCC team. We were teaching there. And it was amazing because um, this, to me, is an example of me being transformed by grace and, and by me experiencing God's grace. And we move on to the second section of the vision statement, which is that it goes to impacting nations. Now, Tonight, I so wanted to share, I was so tempted to share a video that is done up by Anna about the two weeks ago, the Orang Asli mission trip. But I don't want to steal her thunder. This Sunday, friends, I hope you watch it because I was really moved by watching this two and a half minute video, right? I just, it just birthed in me such a joy because I've seen how we've journeyed even from this from our little mission trips, you know, we've done throughout those years, all the way to watching even more participating in our local impacting nations, local uh, initiative. I'm so proud of all of you. And I just want to thank you in TNCC for being that, for creating all those opportunities. And not just that, friends. You know, when we're talking about impacting nations, I hope that you can even, if you don't know where to start, if you think, oh man, I'm boiling an ocean here, it's just too big for me, this vision, hey, start small. You know, like even what Pastor Susan is sharing, the small things that you can do in your natural life, in your day-to-day, -day, you can walk out the supernatural, just ask God. Just ask God, God, give me opportunities that I can be a minister of your grace. And it starts with there. And then from there, you can just take local mission trips before you end up marrying, marrying a missionary, maybe. So I don't know. I mean, you're single still. But anyway, you know what? It's the little, little steps. As we go through these adventures in Acts, the little steps that they expose themselves to, they open up their hearts to this vision, allow them to do great things. And you talk, we talked about Peter earlier on. And you look at Peter's life. The fact that, he, he, was, he was telling God, oh, telling God, telling Jesus, oh, depart from me, I'm a sinful man too. In the adventures in Acts, standing before huge crowds and sharing with them boldly and full of courage about Jesus. Did he begin there? No, he was a stinky fisherman who had given up. And then Jesus called him with the vision that Jesus saw in Peter's life that he would be a fisher of men. And friends, if it can happen to the lowest of the low, to a Peter, and it can happen to someone like me, Clint, it can happen to you as well, I believe. So therefore, you know what? You can be involved in the vision that TNCC has. You can start off by wherever you are, living the supernaturally naturally in the environment that you're in, the lingkungan that you're in, whether is it in a church or even outside. I just want to challenge you, take that step, you know, just take that step and challenge yourself and say, I can do it because I received so much grace. I've been transformed by grace, you know, and I want to impact. I want to impact somebody's life. 
Let us continue. <clears throat> so we go back again to this part. It's a community transformed by his grace, impacting nations with his passion. Now, you know what? I, I look at this world and I see this word passion and I see a lot of people that, you know, exemplify all kinds of passion. And there are a lot of passionate things that, that people could be involved in. It could be electric guitar. It could be Liverpool. I hear a lot of booze. You know, kind of thing like we, we're passionate about something. And if we're passionate about it, we cannot hold it in. For example, I'm very passionate about food. You know, I'm always talking about food. I love food. You know, in the middle of the night, I would just shake my wife and say, hey, you know what? I'm sorry, but I'm just dreaming about this. You know, we talk about, you know, oh, we should go there. Just last night, you know, I just say, ah, oh, I just I just have this, this, this uh, desire to eat Indian food. And I quickly message Carmen and say, hey, you know what? Your husband is a, a food connoisseur. He introduced us to this fantastic uh, uh, North Indian restaurant that was not expensive. I said, oh, yes, that... And I'm passionate about it. And if we can be passionate about that and we talk about it, why not Jesus? Why not whatever that we experience in our lives, we can always take this opportunity whenever things, good things happen to us to share about Jesus and say, you know what? You know how I received this, this miracle that things were impossible to happen? However, God made it possible. And I want to tell you about Jesus. Just a few, a couple of months ago, my, my, my auntie, she's the oldest in, in my mom's side of her family, you know, and I thought that, ah, this is an opportunity for me to share with her about Jesus. And it's been, you know, her, her, her family is entrenched in a very high up in, in, in Freemasons. They are, you know, Freemasons are like the, 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 some of the wealthiest people by invitation only. And I thought, oh no, you know what? I, uh, you know, I, 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 I won't be able to share to her because she's entrenched in it. But I said, this is an opportunity for me to pray for her just before she goes for an operation. And I said, nothing to lose, what? You know, if I'm passionate about Chakwe Tiao, I can be passionate about Jesus as well. So went in the room, in the hospital room, and I shared with her about the gospel. I talked to her about Psalm 23. At the end, I asked her, Dot E, would you like to pray with me to ask Jesus into your life? And you know who? And behold, I was surprised. She said, yes. And I said, okay, you know what, Tony? As I pray, I'll also pray for you before you enter into the operation. Lay, uh, lay hands on her. And I said, Tony, just repeat after me. Auntie, just repeat after me. And we said the sinner's prayer. And it's beautiful. There was such a peace in that room. And then after that, she went for operation and she, she, that peace that we had in the room, it translated over to her having peace during the operation. Came out, everything came fine. She was really so, so, uh, um, so grateful that when we saw her during Chinese New Year, she was like preaching back to us, you know, about Psalm 23. This is not like, this is like a new believer kind of thing, right? So friends, passionate is very infectious, okay? When you see someone and, and, and they're they are passionate about something, sometimes it can just cross over to you, especially things like food. But you know what? Can we do it with Jesus? Amen? We can be passionate. So this is um, the question that some of you may be sitting here and say, how can I flow with vision, right? So um, first thing is that we begin with the person of Jesus. Okay, and not just Jesus. I talked about Jesus a lot, like him having vision. But you know what? He has a conduit, a container that he wants to pour out his vision into. And that person is me. And that person is you. Every one of us can have that opportunity because Jesus wants to use the lowest of the lowest, the highest of the highest, any single person at all that is available, that 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 once that 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 is open up in their heart can be used by Jesus. Every single person. Second thing, prioritize. Now we have so many people. There's so many of us are just pulled in every which way in terms of priorities. I understand. I understand. There's so many things that are calling, are demanding our time and resource. Friends, can I just just you know submit to you? The greatest thing that you can prioritize in your life is Jesus. And you prioritize him. 
what he wants to do in your life and through people, then you're stepping out in fulfillment of the vision that God has for you. I think it's so important to prioritize our lives because if we do not set it in our hearts, any which way we are pulled, we will just follow. But if as long as you, you, you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, not our own righteousness, though we're not that we're ever, ever able to, to earn our, our salvation through our own righteousness, but depend on the righteousness of God through him, what he did for us on the cross, then we know we can step out full of faith and, and, and live out the priorities that he has in our lives. Then the next point is, the next P it is, you can see it's all in P, right? Person, prioritize P, program. Yes, get with the program. And I'm so, I'm so like uh, encouraged. The amount of people, you know, are involved even in our production that's happening in, in Easter. And it's, it's great because I see some people that I never imagined had talent, okay? Like one day from a Borneo group, you, you know, uh, Susan showed me a video of Rockyan. Rockyan doesn't really, you know, he's, 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 he speaks Bahasa, right? But he stepped up and he says, okay, I want to get in the program. I want to get involved. My English maybe not so good and the kind of thing, but I want to be involved. And I'm so proud of him and so many people in, in, in TNCC that have encouraged him and, and so many people in Borneo group, okay? So whatever programs that they are, hey, sign up, okay? Friends, also tonight, the fact that you're sitting here and listening to share me to share about vision, you are prioritizing the program. You're saying, okay, you know what? I can do many things. I can have a night out. But today, I see that a program that TNCC has created for us here so that I can build my spiritual man, I mean, my spiritual being. I can then learn and realize what God wants to do in my life. And finally, you will be a man or a woman or a, or a teenager of purpose. You're going somewhere to happen. And you have the kind of influence that the world is looking for, whether it's TikTok or, or, you know, or, or any kind of social media that the world is trying so hard to capture as the essence of purpose. Friends, when you have Jesus, when you have the vision shining in and through you, you are a person of purpose, going somewhere to happen. Finally, in summary. In summary, it's like this, okay? Break it down. Break down TNCC's vision statement and see yourself, ponder, see yourself and you say, okay, you know what? You know, I want to be involved in community. I want to show the world and my own community how I've been transformed by grace. I want to step out there impacting nations because if I step out there outside of my own comfort zone, hey, then I start to realize that hey, it's not so difficult after all. When I step out and join a short mission trip to, 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 Sim, uh, to Simpang Pulai, and I see, wow, actually, I, I, I used to think that my life is totally miserable, but after going for this trip, I'm so blessed. I want to be able to bless people all around me, the environment, the lingkungan that I'm in, right? I want to make it happen. Yeah, break it down and ponder how can the vision of TNCC be applicable in your life? Second thing, Flow and follow. See what's out there. There's so many things that are happening. Or come up to any of the pastors, the, the CG leaders, the community, you know, and, and the, the leaders in our church, the ministry leaders, and say, hey, you know what? I want to be part of the program. Instead of being a consumer, instead of consuming, I want to produce. From consumer to be a producer. I want to be a blessing. Let me do anything. For so many years, when I was in my previous church, a really, really big and rich church, I would dare say, rich church, right? I volunteered. I volunteered to wash the bathrooms, okay? And I always question, this church is so rich. Why never hire people to wash the bathrooms uh, and the men's toilet, okay? So, you know, even though I was flying around everywhere, you know, in my, in my career, right? I said, you know what? I, I don't have the capacity and time to be involved in, in, a, in, in a strict program, but what I can do every Sunday that I'm, I'm in Singapore, I'm working in Singapore. If I'm in Singapore, I will wash the toilet. Okay? After the service, I'll go for the final service and I'll wash the toilet. And you know, it made me so happy. I mean, not, of course, not cleaning the toilet in my own bathroom. It doesn't make me happy. But you know, in the sense that I'm able to do something and follow the program. I'm able to, to be a blessing even in the simplest way. All right? 
fast and I like this. The last one. Faithful, available, steadfast, and teachable. That is the attitude that Christ is looking for. Faithful. Okay, God has given you something. And I, and I just think that, you know, I've I, I just been, been having the opportunity to talk to various brothers. And I see this, one of the brothers that I was talking to just a couple of days ago really showed so much uh, uh, faithfulness and availability. He, you know, he just said to me, tell me how I can, how can I serve? And I said, okay, you know what? Come, let's do this together. You know, and, and, and it's, it was even, in fact, right now, whatever we're talking about, core values, mission and vision, you know, we wanted to work together and say, hey, you know, we want to encapsulate, capture the essence of this in writing so that, you know what? Every person is indoctrinated with what is our belief system, what are our values and what is our vision, right? Steady, steadfast, right? Someone that is dependable, not, not uh, blown in every way, not like a Peter, you know, a reed that's blown in the wind, you know, but it's steadfast that whatever happens, right? If someone comes up to the person and complains about the church, complains about the leadership, say, you know what? I don't, I, I don't follow what they say, you know what? I believe, hey, you know what? Let me go to the core of what we believe. This is our mission. Share it. You know what? We're, we're celebrating Jesus and his finished work on the cross. You know, and we, we're out there living the supernatural life. You know, and, and instead of looking at the situation, I mean, steadfastly representing the church properly. And finally, teachable. It's so important because I, I see that, you know, we're able to, to, if we're able to submit to the leadership of the church, every one of us have, has someone above us. And I see that one thing I learned is so important to be teachable, to be able to, to say, okay, pastor, or uh, okay, leader, you know, anybody that asked me to do arrange chairs, you know, anything, anything big or small in any way, right? Welcome people, you know, shake a hand, the kind of thing, right? And if people come up to you and, 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 and share something to you, you know, and we're not easily offended. We say, thank you for that feedback. I endeavor to do better so that I can glorify the Lord. Hey, you know what? That's the kind of people that Jesus can use. Teachable people. People who are willing to roll up the sleeves and say, I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to improve. I'm willing to make our church into a better place that will shine for the love of Jesus. Now I'd like to take an opportunity for anybody, you know, to share through, share, you know, about how has TNCC, uh, uh, you know, uh, impacted you? Maybe someone can 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 just I mean maybe Sherry can just read out some of the things that that's been shared. I'll stop sharing. Uh, give 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 me a minute. I'll take. Okay. Um. All right. So, uh, we have from uh, Uncle Alan. God uses a number of individuals to touch my life and transform me. And okay. then we have uh, Bernard and Michelle experiencing what God is doing in TNCC. It's a constant reminder that I am precious in his sight. In him, I can surely keep smiling. Amen. Yeah. And Anybody else may can still continue writing, you know, about how TNCC has really made an impact in, in your life. Just like I shared, you know, my own testimony. And one of them, you know, uh, just a, a, a shout out, an advertisement is, is Deacon Chiram is coming, you know, uh, next week. And uh, like as Uncle Alan was sharing, right, I'm also a, a, a beneficiary, a, a grateful receiver of, of uh, Deacon, Deacon Chiram's life. The fact that when I was, at one point, I, I was jobless and um, I was really struggling. And then Deacon Chiram was really nice. Um, he was... He was so advanced in his career, you know, he was, at the time, he was already senior vice president in, in JP Morgan, and now he's, you know, the managing director there. But at the time, right, he took time to even listen to me, and he shared with me, right, how there were times, he went through the same thing, he was jobless, and then he had his, um, I won't say lucky, he would have his blessed break of working in e Egon Zander, like the top recruitment firm in, in, in the world, you know, the only highest C-suite executives. He got it there. And then after that, you know, uh, got moved in his life. So Uncle Ellen and myself are, are so grateful to have someone like 
uh, Deacon Chiram. So, you know, I'm so glad that he's preaching next Sunday as well. And I pray that it's something that you can receive. There's something I'm sure, you know, you can receive. Uh, okay, Pastor Susan had something. Uh, share and read it up. Yeah. Found an amazing family and community of Jesus. And even my dream husband, I'm so blessed. Oh, what, right? I, I kind of add to that lie, you know. <laughs> you know I, I, like I said, you know, I am a... I, I married a missionary. My life is very different now and I couldn't ask for better, for more because he took the little steps and, and there's the same encouragement I have, you know, but the same vision that you can have. It doesn't have to be huge. Follow the vision that the church is encouraging us with little, little small steps, you know, as you go and more and more, be involved in a program, you know, volunteer and you know what? God will do amazing things and lead you to places that you couldn't imagine that that is so good for you yeah if if i may share personally because i didn't have time to type um god brought my family to tncc and how we've learned and know the real meaning of the new covenant and it actually saved my marriage uh between my husband john and i we had our church wedding and uh, it was a beautiful one because it was, it was one of the first wedding in TNCC that we held. And the community and the family here in TNCC, it's our extended family. Yeah, it's our second home, actually. Yeah. yeah. Have, Even as Sharon was sharing, right, I remember like a few years ago, uh, you know, her daughter, uh, Chloe, was actually not well. And, um, you know, the church got together. To, to, she didn't have insurance coverage at that point in time. I think, you know, it was amazing that people in TNCC all got together, you know, to pay for her hospital bill. I remember even the amount. It was not small amount. But thank you, Jesus, for the amazing generosity that has shown in the Wong's family. And also, you know, from that, I'm so grateful. The Wong's are, to me, like shining examples of people who are so sold out for Jesus in TNCC, yeah. I come to the end of my session. Uh, anybody else? I mean, if I've, uh, I'll pass it over to share in terms of any Q&A. Um, yeah, we have got one more, got a few more uh, sharings here, uh, Yang Wan Chin. Um, experience abundant grace and no condemnation, acceptance and love unconditionally. From CG family, the pastors, family, and various ministries. Uh, we have Alicia from Law Teachings to the Amazing Grace Teachings. Amen. And now, folks, I want to put in a quick ad, you know, about community groups. I, I know many of you are, are, you know, involved in it. Can I also encourage every Sunday or throughout the week, you know, to think about people that, you know, you can invite and point to CG. It's so important that... And on a Sunday, you know, we, 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 we don't want to be a Sunday, Sunday church. I know it sounds a bit weird, right? We want to be an everyday church. And the community doesn't exist just for one day. We're existing for each other 365 days a year. So being part of a community is so important. And what better way than to be in a smaller group where you can be focused. You can, you know, be a conduit, a blessing to a smaller bunch of people and be involved. In, 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 in building up lives. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, yeah. Anybody have any questions or if you still want to share, you can keep it coming. We still have time and Pastor Clean is not going anywhere. <laughs> He's here to answer your questions. Anybody so far? Uh, no questions. That means, wow, you have done a very good job in sharing the vision of TNCC. <laughs> um, yep, so far none. Anybody? No? All right, while you're typing, okay, I'll just quickly run through the announcement, a brief one, if some of you may have missed earlier on, right? Um, I think very important, Save the dates in your calendars. Next two weeks, we don't have any webinar, so don't go and log in because nobody will be there. But we will be back on on the April 12th. 
12th of April, same time Wednesday at 8.30, we will start on the new series, which is the men and women of the Bible. Yeah. Then we have Encounter Night. Encounter Night will be this Saturday, 6 p.m. It's going to be a very wonderful time with the rest of the people where we'll be praying and we'll be singing, right? Flowing with the Holy Spirit is a very different setting from Sunday. Do come. Yeah, do come. Then um, Discovery 1.0, this Sunday is the last Sunday. And we also have the Easter baptism coming up on the 9th of April. Please do reach out to Pastor Vincent, okay? And then, yes, the Passion Musical, which is the biggest production, not only the greatest story ever sung. This is going to be a very good outreach to everyone. So share it with all your friends, your relatives, your immediate family members. Ask them to come. Yeah. Amen. And, and it's a free admission, okay? So remember to scan to get your seat. So if you don't scan, you will not get to go in. So make sure you scan to get your seat, right? Yeah. And uh, then, right? Uh, so, check for any more. Uh, I yeah. just want to do one thing. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, we have Jeannie. She said, encouraged by example set by pastoral team. This month during the Orang Asli visit, there are some Ibu asking Pastor Susan as she was in Indonesia. So there you go. Pastor Susan has been impacting the lives of many. Yeah, praise the Lord. Yeah. And then, anticipate, passion, invite friends. <laughs> yeah. Antisiphon is a powerful inspiration to us, anybody on the street, you know. That should be the way, you know. Uh, but the Orang Asleep Trip, hey, you know, uh, I mean, sorry, the missions, right? Sign up for, for any, you know, the uptake is so popular that, you know, Pastor Susan was just telling me, hey, I think every trip, the last trip was 18 people. You imagine that, right? So the uptake has been so good. And in um, Clayton and Tracy, you know, as I saw the video earlier on about their, uh, the, when they join us for the trip uh, to, to, uh, to Cambodia, they're signing up for one more, you know, in the coming month. I think um, Susan's telling me this morning that somewhere in April or May, or May, I think. And uh, they're going for another trip, you know. So we're so, so happy. And anytime we have an opportunity, whether it's in Indonesia to join Susan, where you see the full uh, impact of having a, a, a missionary presence, meaning that it's not just that people just uh, are visitors. They go there for, you know, a couple of days. She actually has mission teams for the long term. They're staying there. They're being, they're living in the community. They're making impact in the community, sharing Jesus. So you get to experience that full uh, touch point. You know, not just it's not just a, a touch and go. It's literally living with the people. So uh, shout out to to you know the um, the Maidan mission trip there. And yeah, someone from from Orang Asli village in Malaysia heard about. And Ibu asking about Susan, you know, that when she was in Indonesia, they heard about her. So, you know, the kind of impact that we have, uh, it's just such an opportunity, right? And um, yeah, and then one more last thing I just wanted to share this Saturday with the, you know, Encounter Night. I I, I was just, you know, I, I was missing from uh, Pastor Susan's message. Uh, I didn't really hear her preaching, but I heard it on YouTube. And I think sometimes, you know, it's important for us to take every opportunity, you know, to re-listen to a lot of the messages even pastor's message just two days ago, and he was so powerful when he talked about, when pastor talked about, you know, just coming together to worship, you know, and then this where God can reveal the purposes in your life, how he can flow with the programs, flow with what he wants to do in, in and through you. And as, as Susan even shared the week before about how it's, it's in moments, it's in quiet moments that in encounter night as she's just sitting there, just worshiping God, you know, that God has spoken and given her amazing ideas and direction, vision, you know. So don't miss it this Saturday that's coming for encounter night, you know, as we quiet in our hearts, as we just do that one thing to worship, to lift up Jesus, you know what, he is more than ready, whereas our antennas are stretched out, he's more than ready to speak and pour out the secrets and mysteries 
of an open heaven to you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Clean, um, for such a closing of all the seven series with the vision statement of TNCC and your sharing as well. Now, it's a very, very one, we have a very important announcement to make. Now we have Pastor Susan, people will call her Ibu, right? We have mother of all mothers in TNCC, which is Auntie Stephen, her birthday today. So everybody, please give a shout out to Auntie Stephen. Happy, happy, blessed birthday, Auntie Stephen. All right. Happy, happy birthday, Stephen. Happy birthday. Love you. Happy birthday, Auntie Stephen. Thank you so much. Happy so birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. Have a good day. <laughs> Happy birthday, Auntie Stephen. Happy birthday. 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 Happy are you sure that's right? All right. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Pastor Clean. Happy birthday, Auntie Stephen. Have the rest of the blessed night. Enjoy. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you on Sunday. Thank you.